today we will briefly look at uh, testing of uh, SD models. Today's agenda will cover a few topics or rather the concept of testing of SD models can start with model debugging, model verification, model validation and sensitivity analysis. So, these are broad topics that we uh, look at when we think about model testing. Uh, so, uh, what do you want to do model testing? The perfect models are going to be difficult in the case of SD since correctness of model is related to the purpose and varies widely depending on the modeler user as well as the modeling conventions. However, we need to build confidence of the model that we have built so that we can gain useful insight as well as present our finding appropriate to the purpose on hand. So, this is what we want to do. So, we want to test our model so that we can build our confidence on the model so that we can have some belief in the results that is going to give us. So, in model testing we should be designed so that we can uncover the various flaws or errors that we do in the modeling. Some are pretty straightforward if it is programming kind of errors, but logical errors are a little more difficult and we can use it to improve the model to make it better. However, we do testing to prove model is right rather than try to un uncover what is right model, we will come to that later. Sometimes key tests need not be done, modelers fail to document result that is nothing new, it has been there for ages, when OSC started computations, documentation has always been issue. And modelers and clients have confirmation bias and preconception despite evidence to the contrary, sometimes you do not want the results to show what you want to uh, or you are not happy with the results it shows, so you expect the model to be wrong. So, we need to address these things systematically. We will start with a few basic steps and go ahead and look at how to validate the model etcetera ok. So, the first step towards this is model debugging, we already had an introduction to it last uh, last class uh, some time ago where we have looked at a model description and try to uncover the various errors within the model, we already had an experience with that. So, what you want to do is debug the model consists of tracing the errors that prevents the model from simulating properly and correcting them, it is pretty basic step. The common errors are some of it are as follows, the faulty numerical integration method uh, or time step is being used. So, one way to counter it is to reduce the time step and choose an appropriate method. So, what is written above on the right side of this arrow indicates how you have to counter that flaw. Like uh, if you have to use Ranjikuta method, we use RK method, uh, Euler method or the time step is too large instead of. So, we have to reduce the time step and choose an appropriate time step so that we can simulate it properly. Uh, wrong signs in stock equations, one way to avoid is to check and avoid the net flows. Many times we end up instead of having an inflow and outflow explicitly, we can actually model it as a net inflow. So, to do a net inflow, then we have to be careful with the signs so that uh, the model simulates correctly. Floating point overflows as values are too big or too small, or we end up dividing by 0. Uh, only way to avoid check that is to trace the computation figure out at what point the error occurs, look at the table of values and correct the model to see whether that is indeed that large value is it realistic or not. There are functions in uh, Wensum like z i d z or x i d z. So, this is uh, when you divide by 0 what is the value to return. So, instead of returning when you divide anything by 0 it will be uh, indeterminate to avoid that this x i d z and z i z that can be used, you can look it up in Wensum help. When you divide by 0, then what should it return? Should it return 1 or should it return some 0? What should it return that we have to uh, specify and Wensum supports that. So, maybe that may be required if indeed division by 0 occurs or check out the table function to see whether it is extrapolating uh, more than what you desire it to be uh, in the extreme, especially in the extreme. In that case, then we need to give uh, the value such that it extrapolates correctly. So, there are two types of errors, 
one is a warning that the computation is beyond the table function that means extrapolating uh, it, it, some case it may be okay. Other is floating point errors where it actually need be dividing by 0 or due to some error in computations it is getting a large value that we need to fix. So, when you simulate and we get an error then that is something we need to fix and there could be error in the structure itself like flows are not connected to stocks uh, or drawing was not proper uh, etcetera. For these you need to check the model equations and the structures directly. So, now uh, we can use temporary hacks such as floor function or ceiling function or look at a separate part of the sub uh, sub model of the entire model to see understand the issue and fix the actual problem that is actually occurring within the model. So, uh, that is a broad steps about uh, debugging. Closely related to debugging is this model verification overall we what we want to under answer is this question have we built the model correctly. It includes all the debugging steps, but also goes beyond to trace it and test the model to see of the all the logic is correctly modeled and captured as per the specification. So, this is what we want to uh, do. So, that entails what we call as model verification. So, model verification starts with basic debugging and goes a little beyond that one also. Uh, we have few tools in Vensim itself. One of the two of it we have already used is check units and check model. They are necessary, but not sufficient. That means, even if you do the model and click check units, it says units are fine, still there could be errors inside the model based on what values are giving, what connections are giving, there could still be errors in the model. So, they are necessary, but not sufficient. So, we need to actually check for correctness beyond what we see here. Over years, people have come up with various checklists that we can go through to see if the model is correct. Uh, first is to check units and see if very proper names are given to the variables or it makes sense to us. No constants are embedded in the equations. We should try to mention the parameter values only before the analysis choosing our appropriate time steps. Stock values can be changed only by flows every flow should be connected with a stock, we should try to avoid flow flow connections, should try to avoid if then else on min max and other logical statement as much as possible, but if problem entails then we need to include it. We also need to use proper initial values and clearly specify them. So, that model can start in dynamic equilibrium and lastly popular one is to make model aesthetically pleasing. When we as we organically grow the model, we will find that it is looking quite complex, but finally it has to be presented to an external audience, how do we uh, make it aesthetically pleasing. So, one easy way is to use curved arrows instead of straight lines, curves are aesthetically more pleasing than straight lines and sharp curve, sharp lines. So, uh, uh, this is also quite important. So, some of these things may seem quite obvious that we ought to do, but many times in our case we do not uh, do that because it is it seems too trivial for us to worry about, but unfortunately that is the one which ends up causing the errors or causing the various issues in our actual model. So, the one way or rather the only way to ensure we are doing proper debugging and proper verification is to practice. So, that is what we are going to do today we are going to take up a few models and try to practice the debugging. In fact, this time what we are going to do is I am going to lead the debugging that is I am going to read the description point you to different things. So, that you can observe and follow uh, even if you are not able to catch up in the model my suggestion is you go back and look at this video again to see how I am tracing through the model. So, that we can also follow the similar steps. Uh, so, Typically, how I go about checking the model is what I am going to go through. So, let us uh, and for uh, so we have three examples we are going to do today's class. For each of the example, the, the model with errors is already online, uh, you can download them from Moodle, and when each scenario comes, you can try to open the model and see whether it confirms with our uh, understanding. Is that okay. 
I hope I'll remember to mention all the points that I'm going to check. But let's see. Um, again, these are only some of the cases that you're going to see. Uh, so it is important for you to practice with other kind of models. Actually, make some mistakes. Uh, at least from say for example from the exam point of view you may not get exact same errors so there may be any other form of combinations i try to give as many examples as possible but let us see so first is let us just understand the model no need to look at the wensum model yet we have time for it it's a very simple model there is a something called as muskrats uh, it's like a big large rodent uh, it's actually native of north america and invasive species in large parts of Europe and uh, uh, North Asia, that is regions near uh, Russia and stuff. So, let us go with this. Suppose there is a muskrat population area, initially there are 100 muskrats. So, as and when we read the description, we need to visually, uh, not visually, what can I say? Uh, we need to imagine how the model is going to look like. As soon as we use the term like population, okay, muskrat population area. Uh, 100 muskrats. So, chances are it could be a stock. Okay, if it is a population, so maybe it is a stock. So, let us picture that. Autonomous net increase in the number of muskrats per muskrat per year amounts to an average of 20 muskrats per muskrat per year. So, that means it is talking about some net increase in the muskrat population. So, this must this should be a flow that is going into the muskrat stock. Okay. Then, suppose that each year. 10 licenses are granted to set muskrat traps. These licenses are valid only for one year, and each person holding a license may set 10 traps. Assuming the number of muskrats caught per trap is proportional to the number of muskrats and a catch catch rate per trap which is close to 0.2, so minimally 0.195 and maximally 0 0.205. So, this is only description given. So, this so the second part. Since we are already talking about net flow, the second part may be something referring with how much is removed from the population. So, this must be the outflow within the model. Explicitly, as you can see, there is nothing about birth and death that is given. But if you carefully observe the description, there is a there is a word net given. So, this could mean okay, there is something about birth and death that is happening. In spite of that, uh, it is an average of 20 muskrat per muskrat is increasing. So, that is what the description that is given ok. So, now we need to download and debug this model sometimes a, when you open the model it talks about scaling I prefer it is 100 percent. So, you get the exact same size this is the model that you will see. First is the first step is you look at the structure right. So, we imagine Okay, there is some muskrat population, some new muskrats come in and some muskrats is getting caught. So, they removed from the population. Uh, so, description is not fully complete, but given the description we can assume that the muskrat is caught and terminated and not just caught and released back into the population. So, those are some reasonable assumptions to make. And there are some variables like how much muskrat is caught per trap, how many traps per license, how many number of licenses. It seems kind of uh, structurally ok. The next we can try to do is look at the model and say check units, unit seems to be ok, model check model, model also seems to be ok. Uh, then we can quickly trace through the equations. So, new muskrat was about 20 muskrat per muskrat per year right. Uh, so, uh, uh, before we go into that we can actually look at model settings. So, look at what is the time units first try to you see that ok all the description were in years and we have time units also in years and let us look at this side time step 0 0.0625 Euler method seems fine seems reasonable quite low, but let us see we do not know if it will have an impact. Then let us look at the equations. Uh, to just move the mouse, whatever the units pops up below that, you can see um, the unit seems to actually be fine. Uh, you open it, it says new muskrat into muskrat population, 
a new muskrat rate is about 20 which is consistent with what numbers we have. Uh, see any change in constants is not that big a issue we just need to ensure that it is fairly accurate units that is a bigger problem. So, muskrat population should be roughly the muskrat caught per trap into the proportionality factor as per the description and number caught should be number of licenses into number of traps per license multiplied by number of muskrat per trap that should logically give us the number of muskrats caught. So, which is a product of all three muskrat caught is into proportionality factor traps per license is 10 number of license is 10 which is roughly the what the description has said 10 and 10 traps proportionality constant is 0.195 or this taken here 0.195 so minimally it is there right so seems okay let us just simulate it so at least let us see if there is errors override yes okay we get this error floating point overflow this is an error and error it says floating point error computing muskrat population at time 4.06 uh, assimilation run length was 10 years at around 4.06 itself is getting a floating point error trying to save results anyway. So, let us click ok close it let us see the graph the graph is growing. How is the graph growing? No, it seems to be growing hyper exponential. There is a difference. Exponential means it has to have a doubling time, which is constant. Here it is going hyper exponential, much more than what it has to be, right. So, there must be some error. Um, there is 1 and 2. Actually, if you look at it, this is a positive feedback system, it has to keep increasing, but this is a negative feedback system. So, it has to decrease right. So, only descriptions it can have is exponential growth, exponential decay or equilibrium inflow and outflow is equal right. This system cannot have an exponential hyper exponential growth for hyper, hyper exponential growth your proportionality constant or a new muskrat rate or something has to keep reducing or keep increasing number of new muskrat should increase a proportional rate should keep decreasing. So, none of the proportionality constants are changing. Here the proportionality constant is 0.195, 10, 10 right. So, none of the constants are changing correct. So, hyper exponential growth should not occur. So, just try to follow my uh, steps. So, but still muskrat population is changing. You can look at that population is just increasing all the way and what affects the population? Population affected by both these flows. So, let us include that also in the table. I click the time down table and here muskrat population and then suddenly you find that new muskrats are 2000, new muskrat first period is 2000 which makes sense 20 into 100 2000. Number caught is uh, 0 0.195 into 10 into 10, so it should be 1950, which is fine, but it is minus 1950. Let us look at it, what is happening there. Let us look at the population here, this new muskrat minus muskrat caught, okay. Inflow minus outflow, this is fine. Let us look at muskrat caught, this minus muskrat caught per trap into this. So, this minus should not be there because it is minus and then you are already in computing the stocks it is minus of minus. So, it became plus. So, stock value started increasing more than it ought, it ought to. So, let us remove this minus sign. Let us click ok. Let us run the model. We did not get any errors when we ran it this time. Still we are getting exponential growth which is fine. Uh, but at least doubling time is uh, you can check it. Uh, doubling time should remain constant. 
So, this uh, looks reasonable for this kind of errors that does not seem to be any other errors using the model, but these kind of small bugs also can creep into the model. So, even though when you ran it, it did give some results, it did not make uh, logical sense. So, expectation is you actually look at the result and then we try to see how we can uh, understand the dynamics and see whether the model inherently can cause it. When we move to sensitivity analysis and other concepts also we will end up using these these models itself. So, save the uh, what can I say uh, this version of the model ok. Now, we may not still be done it says catch rate per trap is 0.2 minimum 0.195 to maximal 0.205. We can logically see for example, muskrat population is 100 and this is 20, new muskrats is 100 into 20, 2000. So, so instead of proportionality factor instead of 0.195, if it is 0.2, then we get 0.2 into 10 into 10 into uh, 100, which will also be equal to 2000, correct. So, in that case, we need to get a straight line. So, we can check if the model is actually producing all the behaviors as per our expectation. So, if it is anything beyond 0 0.2, then what should it be? It should go exponential decay. So, we can check if the model actually producing all the behaviors, only then it is a completely verified model. So, one way to do is without say changing the model is let us instead of MR 195, I am going to write. 200, click sim setup, click proportionality factor and write 0.2, it is ok. Uh, let us stop it. Now, let us do muskrat population, uh, not to stop it, fine. Uh, let us not use sim setup now, we will do it later. So, MR 200, let us change it. Let us go to the proportionality factor. Let us make it 0 0.2. Click play. Now, actually, we get two graphs. One is a small red line in the bottom, it is actually being constant, another is increasing exponential. You can change it to 205 as a simulation file result name. And change the proportionality factor to 0 0.205. Click OK. Click Run. Now, if you do the plot the population, very difficult to discern here. I have exponential growth, and the other one is supposed to be exponential decay, but I can't make it out from here. So in that case, we can just go to our control panel, data sets, remove the 195 data set. 200 and 205 is what we have. Click OK, click the graph. Now you can get a constant line corresponding to proportionality constant as 0 0.2 and exponential decay when if it corresponds to 0 0.205, which is exponential decay, it is able to produce the results that we can expect from a first order system. So, model is verified, this can be used for further discussions and analysis. Just to quickly go over it, so that we have a record how to go about it. So, when you revise it, it is quite, quite easy for you. Mm -hmm.